Now the last lecture of this section about the risk management processes which we will be covering in detail in the following seven sections. Before I uh, brief you about the seven risk management processes, what do you need before you can effectively begin risk management? There are 10 artifacts, 10 documents which you need to have before you kick off the risk management activities starting with the project background information, information such as correspondence from before the project was approved, articles written about similar projects and other such information that will help you and identify risks. So the project background information, any information before the project starts, any information before even the project charter was signed or the business case was approved will be useful as a risk identification tool. The project charter will be needed as well. The project charter, it's a high level from management, outlining the overall project objectives. It authorizes the existence of the project, gives the project manager the authority needed to complete the project. Why do you need the project charter in the risk management? Because the high level risks of the project, the high level budget, the high level timeline, all will be documented as part of the project charter. The stakeholder register, Stakeholders are individuals and organizations who are actively involved in the project or may affect or be affected by the project. The stakeholder register is a document, it's a live document that will be updated throughout the project whenever a stakeholder is identified, a stakeholder risk attitude is changed and so on. The project scope statement will be needed as well. It can be defined as the approved project and product scope of the project. To perform risk management, it's important to have a finalized project scope statement that describes the complexity of the project. It also includes information about the project constraints and assumptions. Whenever you have or wherever you have constraints or assumptions, there is a potential for risk. So you will always revisit the constraints of the project and the assumptions in order to identify additional project risks and the project scope statement is a document where the constraints and assumptions are documented. The work breakdown structure or the WBS, it decomposes the project into smaller, more manageable pieces known as work packages. Those work packages then are managed by the project manager. All the scope will be decomposed, break down in the work breakdown structure or the WBS and it's produced as part of the scope management processes. The resources plan, it's a formal plan identifying when and how the team, the resources, the stakeholders will be involved in the project and what roles they will perform. And this plan can be used in order to identify resources related risks. Network diagrams that are outputs of the schedule management processes, and it can be defined as a dependency sequenced organization of the project activities. These activities are derived from the decomposition of work packages in the work breakdown structure. Now, to evaluate risks, look at the network diagram. You need to search for the critical path convergence, path convergence, and path divergence, and near critical paths. These four practices uh, on, or these four locations on the network diagrams are potentials for risk identification. I will explain why later on in this course. The procurement management plan should be there as well. It's a formal or informal plan for a project that describes what parts of the project will be purchased under contracts or purchase order. It also includes a plan for managing sellers on the project. There is a strong relation between risks and procurement management plan. Lessons learned from previous projects will be helpful as well. A document what went right, what went wrong, or what would have been done differently by past project teams if they could execute their projects again. Lessons learned can help identify and manage risks on your project. So you need to use lessons learned from previous projects within your organization. And at the end of your project, you need also to improve the existing lessons learned within the organization with the experience of your project. And the last artifact or document will be the organizational process assets. The company should have in place company policies, procedures, and templates for risk 
management. So if you are working on risk management in your project and you need to develop the risk register, for example, you need to refer back to the organizational process assets in order to look for the template your organization is using for risk registers. Now, even the most carefully planned projects can run into trouble. No matter how you will plan, your project can run into unexpected problems. Team members get sick or quit, for example. Resources you were depending on turn out to be not available. Even the weather can throw you into a loop. So does this mean you are helpless against unknown problems? Actually, the aim of conducting risk management activities is to reduce the probability and impact of known and unknown problems. Now, what are the risk management activities or the risk management processes? We usually start with risk planning to identify potential problems that could cause trouble for your project. Then we perform qualitative and quantitative risk analysis. And then we take action. We plan for responses to prevent risks, the identified ones. You can avoid and minimize the ones that you can't. Now, the seven risk management processes that we will be covering in detail in the following seven sections will start with the plan risk management, the process of defining how you will conduct risk management activities for your project. It's about thinking in advance when it comes to risk management, identify risks, the process of identifying both individual project risks and sources of overall project risks, performing qualitative risk analysis, the process of prioritizing individual project risks for further analysis or action by assessing their probability of occurrence and impact as well as other characteristics. So qualitative analysis is more about prioritization. Quantitative risk analysis, which is the numerical analysis of the combined effect of individual project risks and other sources of uncertainty on the overall project objectives, plan risk responses, the process of developing options, selecting strategies, and agreeing on actions to address the overall project risk exposure, as well as to treat individual project risks. All these activities are in the planning. All these processes are part of the planning. An example of the plan risk responses, if you want to jump from here, or there is a risk of jumping from this edge, you just go the other side. This is an avoidance, or you can ask for support in order to reduce the impact of failing. This is the mitigation. The transfer, you can pay someone to jump instead of you, or you can just accept and jump. These are examples of the most popular risk response strategies we will be covering in detail later in this course. The process number six is implement risk responses. It's the process of implementing the agreed upon risk response plans, and it's part of the executing, monitoring risks, it's the process of monitoring the implementation of agreed upon response plans, tracking identified risks, identifying and analyzing new risks, and evaluating risk process effectiveness throughout the project. So five processes in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. This is all for the risk management foundations section.